shortcuts you are using, and it recommends the ones that you haven't used. And I'll, I'll show you how that works. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, the concept is very unique. Um, and then I have another tool called QB to Excel, which basically takes uh, data in QuickBooks and sends it to Excel uh, without you having to do any actual work in QuickBooks. So I will kind of show you. And there's a link to all all three of them. Okay, uh, so let me start with a, a PDF to Excel. So let me jump into my uh, Windows machine here. Okay, there we go. So let's say, for example, that, that um, I sell Apple products. So I basically downloaded this off the Apple website. And this is the item list that, my, uh, that Apple is giving me. Uh, these are all the products that I sell. There's a, there's a part number. There's a description. There's a whatever that, that date means. And then the price. So, so most QuickBooks users would sit there and, and type this information or copy and paste line by line. That's absolutely ridiculous with today's technology. So I'm going to show you something that will kind of blow your mind uh, because it's just really, really, really cool. And like I mentioned earlier, I do so much uh, work with uh, taking price lists and importing them into QuickBooks. When I stumbled upon this tool, I was, out of, I was so ecstatic about it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the PDF a spreadsheet that I, I mean the PDF uh, uh, document that I showed you on the screen here and this tool is called PDF to Excel and basically and it's literally this simple I, I tell the program what where the data what range of data I would like to import so let's say for example that I want to take this entire uh, list of IMAX here and put them into Excel so I basically click on here on the table button and I basically draw up a table like this and then after I drop draw up the table, the system will uh, recognize the information, and I'll show you sort of a, a quick preview down here. Hope you can see on the bottom of how this information would look like when I export it to uh, to Excel. And I can do multiple tables. So that that's the iMac table, and then I can grab uh, whatever the the Mac Pro table, and I can do here. And I can actually select which ones I want. So I don't have to take take them all. I can just take the ones that I want. And then basically uh, after this is done. I click up here where it says conversion format, and I click on Excel, and it'll basically grab this information, and I'll click on convert, and do a spreadsheet with all that information flawlessly. And then afterwards, of course, we can uh, we can implement some of the tools that uh, that Jeff has shown us. Okay, so going back to the example here on um, on uh, before my computer froze, uh, the the example here on taking the PDF. Uh, information and exporting it to uh, to Excel. So I'm going to show you kind of the easy way here is I'm going to uh, save it to the clipboard, which basically means I can copy and paste. And then I'm going to open up my Excel spreadsheet and show you uh, how we took uh, that original PDF. So I want to just to show you some context here because uh, we, we kind of interrupted in the middle of the conversion. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a PDF file like this that I either got directly from my vendor or I scanned. It, even, it can even read OCR. And then I'm using the PDF to Excel tool to select the table range of information. And then with this tool, I can now copy and paste this information into Excel as if this was uh, natively uh, an Excel data. So you can see I have all the information here. And then let's say I don't need this date. I can delete this date. And let's say for whatever reason, uh, like Jeff was showing us with the text to columns, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Let's say for whatever reason, I wanted to separate all these slashes out, and I wanted to make separate columns, and easy. Then I will do the same thing that, that Jeff did here, which is basically select the entire data. And I want to just, every time there's a slash, I want to separate it into a, into a different cell. And then run, uh, run text to columns, and then use, uh, use that particular tool. So I'm going to click here on text to columns. And then I'll select delimited. It's exactly what Jeff said. I'm just kind of showing you a practical example of using actual real data uh, that we got here from Apple. And then, and then there we go. It would actually uh, take this information. So you can you can do you know all, all sorts of magical things with this stuff. So I thought these two tools are are particularly interesting, and I wanted to kind of kind of show those. I am going to uh, go ahead and show you a different tool uh, called. Um, Key Rocket. So the way Key Rocket works, and I'll kind of show you here on the bottom. The way Key Rocket works is it keeps track of all the shortcuts that I that I've had the biggest opportunity of using. So, for example, as you can tell here, is one of the functions that I use the most is create a new uh, workbook. 
but I actually do it manually. So I usually what I do is I go to File, and I go to New. Now what happens is when I do that, down here in the bottom, it's warning me saying, hey, you missed an opportunity to use uh, uh, a shortcut. You should have used Control N. So in the event that I use Control N, the system down here tells you, hooray, you just lear learned the shortcut. And basically what it does is it learns which shortcuts you're using and it notices which shortcuts you should be using and it will kind of just kind of keep reminding you and it's the, it's the, it's the best thing to use uh, to learn shortcuts. So I'll kind of just show you. I'm going to uh, select this whole column here and automatically it tells you, see, you should have used Control Spacebar. And I'm going to right click here and delete and the system says, see, you should have used uh, control minus. So it's actually pretty cool. Or if I hit, for example, if I hit this button here for select all, it'll tell me you should have used control A. So it's really, really neat uh, software. And it works for Excel, Word, Outlook, PowerPoint. And, um, and it's basically there to just kind of train you on shortcuts. So, it's, so you can either print out a huge shortcut list, like the one that I put together and I send you the link. Or you can use uh, a trainer like this. And basically, within I would say within less than 30 days, you will learn 20 new shortcuts. Within a year, you will learn 100 shortcuts, especially if you're using uh, Excel every day, because the system just kind of uh, forces you to do so. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, regarding the keyboard shortcuts, um, I definitely think one of the one of the ways to to quickly get a productivity boost is to figure out how to communicate with Excel uh, the fa as fast as you can. I mean. The faster I can tell Excel what to do, the faster I'll get my job done. And so keeping your hands on your keyboard to improve your speed is absolutely one of the, one of the big ways to do that. So that, uh, it's funny. that add-in looks cool. And it's funny you mentioned that uh, in, the, um, in some of the QuickBooks classes that we teach down here, there is a, a section where I teach people basically how to, how to work the bank register without using a mouse. So I literally take the mouse away from them, and they kind of see me as a, one of, like one of those old school bad teachers, right? Uh, I literally take the, the mouse away from them and say, you learn how to do this with keyboard shortcuts. Learn how to use tab. Learn how to use uh, shift tab, all these things. And, and people, people tend to appreciate it at the end because, um, because at the end of the day, uh, learning those shortcuts, just, just, it, it just saves you so much time. It's just absolutely incredible. OK, uh, let me jump over to uh, importing an item list into QuickBooks. And let me go ahead and close this. So the purpose of learning a skill like concatenating and text to columns and importing information uh, from, uh, from uh, a PDF into Excel to then bring it into QuickBooks. After all, this is QB power hour. And, the, and what we're trying to do is, is ultimately help you do something in QuickBooks. So something that's very typical is we get <coughs> a spreadsheet from a vendor and we get uh, basically an item list, OK? But something that's very common is we get uh, sort of a, like a brief product description and multiple columns for uh, size, color, amount, uh, additional info, that, that, that sort of thing. So what I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and concatenate all this information, which is exactly what Jeff did. And then I'm going to import it into QuickBooks so you can see a real practical example of what you've uh, learned today. So I'm going to go ahead and insert uh, a column here. And then I'm going to use uh, the concatenate uh, formula. And I'll basically go ahead and put uh, the description. And then I'm going to put uh, comma. And then I'm going to put qu uh, quote, space, quote, which basically just inserts a space between the, the two. And then I put comma and put the other one, the other cell there, and then do comma, quote, space, quote, comma. And then I'll bring, let's say it's just going to be this three. And then I close parentheses, and then I basically concatenated these three, and these three are going to be my new product description. So we'll put here uh, description. There we go. And so basically, this is what I'm going to import into QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and hide all these because I don't, I don't need them anymore. I'm not going to delete them because they're part of my formula. If I delete them, this whole thing will go haywire. So right now, it's just a matter of putting those descriptions in there. The other thing I'll do is, um, let's say my, my vendor gives me their manufacturer's part number, but internally in QuickBooks, let's say for whatever reason, we add the first three digits of the product description and the manufacturer's part number, and we join it, and that's going to be our new item name. So I'll just use here uh, item name, 
and then I'll use uh, a couple of formulas here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use the left formula, which basically grabs uh, the text from left to right. So I'm going to use the left formula for this, and then put comma three, and that basically just renders the first three characters. Okay, so that's so well, that's the first part of it. The other piece is I want to concatenate. So what I'm looking is to concatenate this information. So I'm going to use concatenate here, and I want to concatenate that with, let's say, for example, a, a slash, uh, and then the manufacturer's part number, and then I'll close parentheses, and that's going to give me. I guess what's going to be my new item name in QuickBooks. Okay, there we go. So I don't need. So I got now. I got manufacturer part number, item name, description. I got a cost. I got sales price, and I have to make sure that I also have uh, income account, cost to goods sold account, inventory account, and very important inventory part. And that's all going to make sense when we actually uh, do the import. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and close it. And now I'm finally going to do something in QuickBooks. I know some of you were saying, "Hey, when?" When is QB Power Hour going to do something about QB? So, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and go to the File menu here, go to Utilities, go to Import, and go to Excel Files. Okay, and um, it tells you here you can also use Add Edit, and I I've, I've shown Add Edit in previous webinars, so I'm just going to focus on a different tool now. We're going to show the Advanced uh, Exporting tool here which is the one here uh, called advanced import. Sorry, I said export, advanced import. And then with the advanced import, I'll kind of show you the mechanics of how this works. Um, in the background here, you can see an item list that basically doesn't have anything. It's a blank item list. So we're going to show you how that uh, Excel item list is going to import into QuickBooks and how the mechanics of mapping works. So the first step here is I have to choose uh, which is the Excel file. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my Excel file and uh, hit open. And then after the Excel file gets open, uh, and you have to kind of give it a second for it to load, it's going to ask me which sheet, right? Because I could have multiple sheets. So this one just happens to be this sheet here called split data. And then the mapping is the important piece, because if, if, if QuickBooks doesn't know how to read the information, it cannot import it. So I'm going to go ahead and create mapping here and go to Add New. And then I'm going to give it a name, so I'll just call it a uh, new item list or something like that. And then this, this will be saved forever, so if you have more Excel templates uh, with information like this, it will import perfectly. So uh, import type here, I'm going to select item, right, because that's what I'm, I'm going to import. And then I have to hit some key elements here. So uh, item type, you have to use that. That is not optional. So I have to have item type, and this is matched. So this is going to bring in uh, inventory part, which is what we put in there. The item name, that's also a required field. Uh, so we have item type, and then we have item name. These two are required fields. I cannot skip these two. Uh, account, uh, account uh, income account, expense account, and asset account, th those are also required fields. So I have to put all these here. So I'm going to map these uh, based on what I have uh, in, in QuickBooks here. So I'm going to map them together. Uh, and then everything else is, is optional. Cost, price, description. All the stuff is optional. These here are the core elements that I want to bring. But let might as well bring the information, right? So I'm going to click description here, match it with description. And then there's also a purchase description, which is what goes in the PO. And I'm also going to head, go ahead and match that to description. So let's say, in this case, my sales description and my purchase description are the same, but you can import different if you want. Um, if I was importing initial balances, uh, I, would, I would do on hand, which, which I'm not doing at the moment. Uh, and then here's my cost, so let me go ahead and map my cost, and then let me map the price here with uh, my sales price, and uh, and I don't really need anything else. Oh, there's manufacturer's part number, I almost missed that, that would be useful too, and then I'll hit save. <clears throat> so basically that's how the mapping works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on preview to just kind of get an idea for what this is going to look like before I bring it in, and, th and the preview kind of gives you a general idea of what this item will look like. So this will give you some confirmation that, that your mapping seems correct and there's no errors detected. So this should just work. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And then the minute I hit import, it tells me, hey, be careful. Uh, you know, you should do a backup before, blah, blah, blah. I'll hit yes. Uh, and then it tells you how many were imported and how many had errors. And so if you have an error, we can save here the error log. Let me just uh, save the error log to kind of give you an idea. Now, I actually don't know what error I committed. I have no clue. I didn't do that on purpose or anything. I should say 
I did it on purpose, but I but I didn't. I'm not sure what error I committed. So let me take a look at the error log here uh, to see exactly what went wrong, and it will tell you. So where is my error log? Okay, there it is, and then it tells me here that uh, the expense account specified doesn't exist. Perfect. This is actually a great example of something that I failed to do before. Uh, so let me show you what that item list looks like now and kind of show you what I mean by this. Uh, whenever I set up a sales account, a cost of goods sold account, an inventory account, we have to assume that these accounts actually exist in QuickBooks. If they don't, we're going to have a problem. So let me go into QuickBooks and I'll go into the chart of accounts and let me make sure that I'm creating my income account called sales because that's what I'm mapping it to. And I have to create my cost of goods sold. Okay, so sales is there, sales is good. And then I have to create my cost of goods sold account. Cost of goods sold account. And hit save a new. Okay, and then I have to create my inventory asset account. Now, m most QuickBooks files that are already fully set up, they would have that, but in this case, I just created one from scratch. So after doing that, and I'll close the Excel here, I should really have no issues uh, importing it now. So let me just close that. I'll hit no here for the error, and then let's try this again. So file, utilities, import Excel, and I'm actually kind of glad that we had that error because it pointed out something very important. It's kind of frustrating when you kind of don't know the, the nuances of this. So that's actually a very common thing where the account is wrong. And then I'll click on import. And I'll hit yes. Yeah, I know I have to back up. Thank you. And then it could take uh, it could take a couple of tries here. Let me just make sure uh, what, what the new error is here now. Of course, I'm doing this live now. I'm going to get a bunch of errors. One was nice. Two, two is too many. <laughs> Uh, so let me load that. Let me load that information back in here, and there's my my preview. So my preview tells me that that the information is pretty complete. There's an income account called sales, expense account called cost of goods sold, inventory asset. There's my cost, manufacturer's part number. I think this should be okay. I'm not sure why I'm getting an error. So we'll go ahead and try this again. File utilities, import Excel files. And then we'll click on Advanced Import. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit Import. And then we'll look at the error log again. So the nice thing is you'll just keep getting error logs until you figure out what you did wrong. So let's uh, open up the error log again and see what the new error is. Now, I, I love the fact that you actually get an error log per file, uh, I mean, per, per item. So in this case, it says Asset Account. Uh, the asset account doesn't exist. So apparently the issue is I may have Decker, misspelled. Yes? You did misspell it. You put assets with an S. <laughs> and wow. people, are, <laughs> people are very <laughs> understanding. They see that and that you, uh, you had an S on the end. Can you, can you believe that? <laughs> These people are paying attention. <laughs> wow, wow, that's, that's awesome. I, I was going to sit here for hours trying to figure this thing out. Um, okay. well, we didn't want to do that. All so right, Hector, okay. Yeah. So Hector, I have a I have a question for you, and I didn't prep sure. you for this, so I hope I didn't catch, don't catch you offhand. When would you continue to use this feature as opposed to the new add and edit list multiples? Because that, you that's, can copy that's, and paste with that one. So that's a that's a great great question. I, I'm glad you brought it up. So there's my import after I fix the account, and you can see all the information is there. So I will tell you when you would pick this one versus add edit. So when you're creating new assets, I mean uh, new items, brand new items, it actually should be no, no different. So if you use this tool or use add edit, it would work either way. Uh, what I like about this tool is that it has preset mapping. Uh, so if you have a common spreadsheet that you uh, go in there and you make changes to, uh, this is going to be easier. So the problem with add edit, and I just I kind of show you uh, the issue with add edit, so I'm going to go to add edit, is that for me to make changes to an item, so when I go into my uh, inventory items, in this case I may have to uh, turn them on here, but when I, when I import the items in here, it's great for copying and pasting new items. The problem that you have is that for updating, this is not so good because you can, you can manually make changes here, but if you have to update in Excel and then bring changes in there, 
it's going to be a lot easier. So I'll just illustrate an example here. Um, and and that will, I'll, that will, this will be the best way to answer that question. So once I already have an item list, let's say that my sales price needs to change. And my sales price now needs to be, let's say, 50% markup over cost. So I would take my original spreadsheet if, if I have saved it. And I would, uh, let me just close that. Let me open up my original spreadsheet here. And that should answer the question in a, in a really good illustration. So if I take my original uh, price list here, and my client is asking me, Hector, I need you to take uh, the sales price and now multiply it times 1.5 the cost. So I'll go in here and do a, just a regular kind of uh, Excel formula here. So multiply that times 1.5, and then I'll, I'll bring this down, and then I'll save it. Now what happens is I don't have to copy and paste. I don't have to try to match. The, 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 the names or the, the numbers, I don't have to do anything else in QuickBooks. I literally, and let me just show you, so this price is 1403. So I literally come in here and go to Utilities Import Excel, and I'm going to go through the same exact motion, but now I'm going to get uh, sort of a, a different uh, messaging, and, and it, would, it would make a lot of sense once, once we do it. So I'm going to go through this motion here, uh, load that spreadsheet again to make sure that the new changes are there. And I'm going to go into um, select the, the sheet and go to import. And now I'm going to get a new message that didn't happen before. The new message says, wait a second, now we're talking about duplicates. You already have this item list. At this point, I can say, I know this is what I want to do. I want to replace the data with the imported data. So this is where it becomes really, really useful when you do a successful import through here if you want to make uh, price changes on the fly, you basically do this. And now, going back into QuickBooks here, I open the item and I actually see a, um, a, a, uh, a, the new sales price in there. So it's actually kind of, <laughs> kind of awesome. Um, all right, 